اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وما ارسلنا کا اللہ رحمت للعالمین صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ دی ورس وچ آئی ہیو چانٹڈ از فرام سورہ الانبیاء چیپٹر 21 verse number 107 Allah says that we have not sent you O Prophet Muhammad but for whole of the mankind as a mercy chapter number 21 verse 107 why I have chanted this verse because most of the people or the western societies or western people they do not know that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was sent to the whole of the mankind not to the particular Arabs which most of the orientalists or people they have in their minds the eulogizing of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has to be done into the whole of the world as a mercy today the topic is about the stature of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him I would like to educate to the people, especially non-believers or non-Muslims who do not know the, the stature of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad said, If anyone hears my name and do not believe in me, will not enter into the paradise. Now make your choice. You have to prove that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not the true Prophet. This is, we owe to you or you owe to yourself this knowledge that you have to sift that really Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a Prophet or not or imposter, inverted commas, according to the Western standards. I quoted already the ayah whereas if you see the other biographies of prophets in the bible minor or major or if we take quran you will never be able to find that other prophets were sent to the whole of the mankind ya qawmana oh my people whenever the other prophets address to their but to call people, they used to say, Ya qawmana, oh my nation, oh my people. But when Muhammad وسلم, said and addressing, Ya ayyuhannas, oh mankind, through Archangel Gabriel, and Allah is revealing to Prophet Muhammad, say, oh mankind, Ya ayyuhannas, never address Ya qawmana, oh my people, because Quran is the final testament whereas the other books were not they were sent only to the particular people and the particular time and that's all it was the fittest message to that nation to the particular time and era but quran speaks totally differently quran addresses to the whole of the mankind that this book oh people come take the challenge of this book if you say think that this book is not from god they would have been so many discrepancies, double statements, contradictions, you would surely find in it. Allah says open to everyone, come, take this book, have a litmus test, make a test, check the level, and you will see your heart will testify that this is Al-Haq. And we find this verse in the Quran. Allah says in Surah Fusilat that we will surely show our signs in the horizon in front of you and within your own selves and your heart will testify that this is Al-Haq that this is the book which is true you see which book uh, makes challenges I'm asking does Bible make challenges does Gita or whatever the other books of Hindus or whatsoever lumped up any so called holy books do they make any challenges Quran is the standing miracle not the miracle in the books, which is the old times, 
ancient tales, etc. Quran is here. Come, accept the challenge. The biggest miracle of Quran is that it has been memorized in the people's heart. Everyone, little child can rattle it off. Maybe he doesn't understand. But the point is, memorization, you eradicate whole of the parchment of the Quran. You cannot eradicate from the hearts of the people. Prophet says, I'm leaving the book with you, the book which cannot be eradicated through water. And Quran says itself, Allah says, that we have kept this book in the, into the hearts of people. Sadur. Can't you see this is the standing miracle? And then Quran gives the test. And he places Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2, verse number 21-22. Then Surah the Yunus chapter 10, verse number 34 to 38. Then Surah Al-Hud, the next chapter after chapter 11, verse number 13. Then Surah Al-Isra chapter 18. Onwards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep giving, keeps giving the challenges after challenges. But he stops at Surah Al-Baqarah. He says that you can never produce or you'll never be able to produce something like of Quran. Do it. You can't. If you cannot produce anything like of the Quran, then what is the answer? Allah gives the answer that وَإِن لَمْ تَفَعَلُوا وَلَن تَفَعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ Allah says that do it, create something, replicate it. If you are unable to do it, then ready, be ready for the hellfire whose fuel is men and stones, prepared for the disbelievers. Challenge is there, either accept Quran or then produce something like of it. Either way, you have to do something. You have to let the camel to sit either one of the sides. You cannot just let it happen, keep standing, that's all. Either go to left or go to right. But if you want to be a middle monkey, there is no salvation for you. This is but pure message from Quran. If you hear the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu you have to believe in him. There is no other salvation. There is no other heaven or hope beside that. And this is what Jesus said. When the disciples were asking, he said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That time of Jesus, he was the way, the truth, and the life. At the time of Moses, he was the way. At the time of Jesus, he was the way. And at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was the way till doomsday. Why? Because this prophet has to be for eternity, for eternal purposes. And that is what Prophet Muhammad, he has been prophesied in all the previous books. Read his biographies. You see, great people read about him and they couldn't continue reading because they said that this is something not befitting to the majesty of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to keep continuing reading about his stature, about his great things. They eulogized him so greatly, so profusely, that they give real justice to him. And look at us, what we Muslims are doing. Are we really keeping, elogizing our Nabi, our Prophet, to the right culminating point, to the summit of mountain? Are we, ask yourself, that are we really taking care of our Nabi, his stature? You see how much caricature is going on against him? Assassination, his characters, character assassination. So please, there is no other way. Har ko ja bini jahan e rangu bu. Haan ke az khaqish baroye dar zu. Ya ze nure mustafa ura bahast. Ya hanu ze andar talash e mustafas. There is no other way than to accept the stature of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this message to the western people where the inner core is totally Quran in the middle ages. When the dark ages were gone. What happens after that? These western people when they learned all the things from the universities of Spain, the Muslims, they implemented. So all the inner core of everything was Quranic. We forgot to preach that. Wherever you find the good things about sobriety, morality, brotherhood, piety, empathy, sympathy, all are 
the fruits of Prophet Muhammad Western people, either they are following it willingly or unwillingly, everything goes to him who Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, who started the police system, Umar ibn al-Khattab Napoleon Bonaparte said, if this world produces two Umar, one in the east and the west, there will be peace and serenity in the entire world. This is what Napoleon Bonaparte said. Read Mahatma Gandhi, what he said about Jesus of Nazareth and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Read the people, read their histories, biographies, what these people wrote and how they were inspired. They were not like today's people who are enslaved of information. They were knowledgeable people. They know what to do. They were pervasive. They know how to talk, how to utter, how to proselytize, not just talking in an apologetic way. They were not like that, those people. Thomas Carlyle, what did he say? Many big scholars of the past, philosophers, thinkers, non-Muslims I'm talking about, what tribute they gave to Prophet ﷺ. Michael H. Hart, what he said about Prophet ﷺ. George Bernard Shaw, any religion in 1850s in Royal Albert Hall, any religion which has a tendency to conquer the world, he said in England, nay Europe, Within 100 years will be Islam, but we let it down. We made Islam a spent force. This is our problem. Why we have made Islam a spent force? This is our problem. This is our weakness. Why? What happened to us? Why we have lost this assertiveness? We should be assertive enough to do our job, to do things. We should be ready enough. We have all postponing of things. We have weaknesses. We should figure out all the angles. We have haq. We have the guidance. This guidance was given to Jews at the time of Moses that they were the torch bearer to the rest of the world. But they got enough of it that Allah already got rid of them. Now they have lost the role. They have lost the job. The job of what? Beacon. They were supposed to be the beacons to the world. But they made their religion a racial religion. This is not our case. We have the haq. It is our sole duty to proselytize, to convey. Prophet says that deliver the message on my behalf. This was the message given in the last pilgrimage, his sermon, the last sermon he is telling before departing this world. He is saying that deliver the message from my behalf or on my behalf to the people who are not here. And this message is kept going on till now. So whatever we hear, it is our sole duty to present that, to, to deliver this message. We cannot just keep working. Allah says in the Quran, if you are just like that, just selfish, talking about selfless, you're just, you know, living for your own self. Allah says in the Quran, he said that don't be like the cattle who just give milk, deliver babies, you know, procreate and then sleep. Allah give them example. Similitude, be like the lions of God. As the lion is coming to you and these kuffars are running away as fleeing like a wild, wild donkeys as fleeing away from a lion. This is Surah Al-Mudathir. Allah says in the Quran, but what happened to us? Why are we not paying attention? This is my point. Educate the West about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why are we not educating our Nabi? Why are we not telling to them, do you have any better candidate than our Nabi? What is the matter with, what's the matter with us? This is the problem. What is the matter with us? Why can't we tell them that we have the best thing, we have the best book, we have the best economics of, you know, Islam. You know, it's very strange. I mean, I don't know what to, what to say. Trust me. It's very strange. We have made this religion like rituals and rites. And most of 90% of ulamas, they are busy in making, you know, 
I don't want to say something, then it becomes controversy over me. Just leave it aside. I don't want to talk about that. But people are not blind. We can see what topics, mostly 90% of the ulamas they have on YouTube and what they are discussing. And this is sad. The things which are the important things we are not discussing. The spine of Islam, that Islam is total socio-political economic system. It's a deen, it's a way of life. This is we ought to tell them. We have economic system. We have a whole statecraft, the blueprint and implementation by four guided caliphates. We don't need anything. We don't need Lenin. We do not, we do not need any Hitler. We, do, we do not need any kind of people. You know, like this everything, what to do to give new ideas against communism. Joseph Stalin comes, then the Russia comes, then Tsar comes. We don't need these things. We have everything. We have everything and Unfortunately, we are not abiding with that. What is happening to us? Why have we become spineless, emasculated? Like Sheikh Ahmad Dida Rahimullah used to say that we have become castrated. This is a very strong word. I don't want to use this word over men. This is very sensitive, but this is true. Castrated, emasculated, spineless creatures just walking like a weight on the shoulders. Men are not behaving like men. Women are behaving like men. This is the bitter truth, irony of fate that we have been going on. And for many, many years, look at the things happening in Gaza. <clears throat> look at the things happening in right now, Rafah. How can we face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I don't understand. Our prayers, our good deeds, are they being accepted in the sight of Allah or not, I do not know. And trust me, we don't feel any charm when you pray because in the heart, you are so sad, demoralized. Demoralized of what? The things happened around us. Is Allah is accepting our deeds or not? Allah knows. Because we have very great internal evidence in Islam that if we do not care about our people, حقوق ibad our whole good deeds has no value. Now this is very simple philosophy of Islam and may all ulamas know this, but they don't tell you that. Don't tell you that. Prophet said, give simple, simple examples in hadith. If husband is angry over his, his wife and wife is praying whole night, Allah will not accept his prayers, her prayers because husband slept uh, with the bad mood or whatever. Can you believe these are the things? So this is husband. What about the relation with your Muslim? Prophet says, all the ummah is one body, one jasad. If one part feels the pain, the whole should feel the pain. How come? So I do not know, but it doesn't mean that we should not do any rites and rituals. But my point is, the pain, guys, the empathy, the sympathy, the ambivalence, which I feel now while praying, it's something strange. But we have to pray. We have to do all the things in Islam. I'm not saying that, that go away from these things, but the charm is not there because you know that in your heart, something is not right. Something has driven out from us, like a soul is not there. It's just like bodies walking around. You will find the Adhan proclamation everywhere five times a day, but you will never find the Ruh of Bilal And you will find indeed many good philosophies, but the instructions unto righteousness are not to be found. Just talking, just sermons and all that stuff. But trust me, educate the Western people about our Nabi. This is our duty. Because the completion, the mission of Prophet ﷺ, the completion of the mission of Prophet ﷺ cannot be done till Islam goes from east to west, north to south. This is especially Islam will go from east to west. It is all about horizontal. Islam has to go also vertically. Vertically, horizontally, Islam has to be spread. And this is what Allah says in the Quran, in the Quran very clearly in Surah Saf, chapter 16, verse 9. I'm going to end with this. Who will the Ziyar Salah Rasulahu Bilhuda with Dinil Haq? 
لیوزہرہو علی الدین کل ہی ولو کری الکافرون it is he who sends down the messengers with guidance with the religion of truth and he makes sure that the religion it will conquer all other religion and this will happen before the end of day and we have to be the support for that it will happen walau kari al kafirun how much the kafir will detest it walau kari al mushrikun how much the mushrik will detest it wa kafa billahi shahida and allah is enough to witness to this fact that his religion will prevail with you or without you wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin